the grave. John Brown's body lies mooring in the grave. John Brown's body lies mooring in the grave. His soul is marching on. Today's musical history is, is about John Brown. He was an American uh, abolitionist leader who believed he was an instrument of God raised up to end slavery in the United States. He believed that since years of peaceful protests, peaceful protests, had done nothing to free slaves, that violence was not only justified, but absolutely required. So John Brown was born 1800 in Corinthian, Connecticut. He first became famous as an anti-slavery leader uh, during the bleeding Kansas border wars over uh, whether Kansas would enter the Union as a free or slave state. Okay. Uh, John Brown fought the forces of slavery in many more battles, but is best known for his last engagement at Harper's Ferry, uh, and then Virginia, now West Virginia. Uh, his plan was to capture the arm federal armory and uh, then distribute all of the rifles to slaves throughout the South. And the slaves could use those rifles to rise up against their owners, kill their owners, and then uh, acquire the property of their former, now dead owners. Uh, he got as far as capturing the rifles, but before he could distribute anything, he was captured by a company of the United States Marines, uh, which were part of a larger force led by Colonel Robert E. Lee, uh, who would, a couple years later would be famous as General Robert E. Lee of the Confederate Forces. Uh, John Brown was very quickly tried, uh, found guilty of treason, murder, and inciting rebellion. And then he was very quickly, the, he was the first, uh, the first person ever executed for treason in the United States. Uh, he immediately became a hero and a martyr uh, throughout the United States for, for abolitionists, for all abolitionists. Uh, and as soon as the war started, the Civil War started very soon after that, and he was a hero for the Union forces, uh, and the Union soldiers immediately began writing verses about uh, writing songs about John Brown. For the basis of their the base of their songs, they used an old an old revival hymn, an old folk song uh, that had been around for a hundred years called. It was called, in fact, "Say, Brothers, Will You Meet Me." So, this was an older. This was an old, old song at the uh, at the time of John Brown, and this is the this is the tune that they started with when the Union soldiers started writing verses about John Brown. Say, brothers, will you meet us? Say, brothers, will you meet us? Say. the old folk song and uh, Union soldiers began writing verses uh, using that tune. Uh, early on the songs were all would all have a verse about John Brown that they'd repeat three times. He's gone to be a soldier in the army of the Lord. He's gone to be a soldier in the army of the Lord. He's gone to be a soldier in the army of the Lord. His soul is marching on. Then they would all, of course, end with the, every verse would end with the, the chorus of glory, glory, hallelujah. Well, the songs about John Brown began very simple, just one line repeated three times. Uh, after a few months, uh, some people started getting a little more uh, inventive, and the, the verses became a little more elaborate. Ended up with things like... John Brown's body lies mouldering in the grave While weep the sons of bondage who me ventured all to save Though he lost his life while struggling for the slave His soul is marching on Glory, glory, hallelujah Glory, glory, hallelujah His soul is marching on. He captured.
should have to stay with his nineteen men so few and frightened old Virginie till she trembled through and through. They hung him for a traitor, they themselves the traitor crew. His soul is marching on. Glory, hallelujah, glory, glory, hallelujah. His soul is marching on. This became a uh, like a number one, absolute number one hit throughout the entire North. By the end of 1861, this was the the song everybody was singing. Uh, there are a few people that thought, uh, you know, moldering in the grave maybe wasn't maybe wasn't the nicest verses to be singing, uh, you know, in polite society or at revival camps like the. They used to sing the, the song this was based on was an old revival hymn that you'd sing in church. So Molden in the Grave didn't, didn't sound quite as good. And plus, the song kind of focused on uh, on John Brown. John Brown freeing the slaves. Uh, John Brown uh, being a hero. Uh, and a few folks thought, well, maybe, maybe the song should focus on the Lord. You know, John, focus on the Lord freeing the slaves and, uh, and uh, coming to save the world. So uh, in an, abolition, an abolitionist uh, named Julia Ward Howe wrote a new version of the song that was a little more appropriate for church and, uh, and also uh, folks still are more on the Lord uh, freeing, every, freeing the slaves and, and John Brown freeing the slaves. Uh, the, the, the version of the song that uh, Julia... Ward Howe came up with goes something like this. And I have seen the glory of the coming of the Lord. He trampling out the vineyards where the grapes of wrath are stored. As loose the faithful lightning of this terrible sword. It, truth is marching on. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Glory, glory, hallelujah. His truth is marching on. This became the most popular version of the song and remains uh, the version that most of us uh, know today. Uh, so the next time you hear that song, think about the uh, uh, think about the the uh, abolitionist John Brown who inspired it.